On this episode, I talk Snap Cash, the thank you economy, and what would I do with my children on social media in the future? Yeah, I know, I said media weird. Media. You ask questions, and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. Everybody, this is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and welcome to episode 44. Thank you of the Ask Gary V Show. Before I get into uh, the questions today, first of all, I just want to thank everybody for the birthday and anniversary wishes. Had an amazing weekend with Lizzie. Lizzie, I love you. Great time off the grid, back on the grind, ready to uh, close out 2014 with a bang. The march to 40 years old is on, and I'm very, very focused. A uh, couple things. One, if you're watching this today on Tuesday, November 18th, what are we? 18th, uh, I will be on the Seth Meyers show tonight. Uh, so set your DVR or stay up to. 12.05 Eastern time. Uh, I don't know what it is on the other coasts because the East Coast is the best coast. Uh, and two, very interesting development out of Airbnb. Nobody asked me this question, but I figured once in a while I want to rant about things. Airbnb going into print, uh, a magazine I think called Pineapple. I've been a little off the grid. I've got to answer this snap cash question and I haven't really even played yet. So, But... Um, uh, Really, really interesting move to me. Something I want to address with everybody. I'm very fond when the new world goes old world. I love when Warby Parker and Birchbox, an investment of mine for disclosure, open up retail stores. I love when Airbnb makes a print magazine, uh, CNET making a print magazine. You know, I'm one who you know, kind of like pounds on traditional media. But if the cost structure is right and the strategy is right for Airbnb, as they continue to grow, they're now trying to get to that final step which is broad awareness and a print magazine in supermarkets across the country or Barnes and Nobles is a way for them to get to that 45 to 75 year old that is not as savvy and maybe that cost of printing on trees might bring them value and so uh, to me I like the convergence of the new world going into the old world versus the old world going into the new world. Tyler asks, do you still think the thank you economy will self-destruct in 2015? Are brands living up to your predictions slash thank you economy expectations? Tyler, once again, and I talk about it all the time, I think things are gonna happen sooner than they become. My prediction in, in thank you economy was that people would understand this and then everybody would do it and by 2015 it would get ruined. I am so off on that prediction, it's borderline embarrassing. You know, D-Rock, I don't know, can you like take my face right now and give me like rosy cheeks? Like can you make my face red right now? Because I'm so embarrassed um, by how off I am because two part, one, people just haven't adopted the thank you economy and thus if they haven't adopted it and scaled and ruined it, how can it be over, right? And so, (laughs) it might take a lot longer, it may take forever. More importantly, the people that do attack the world in a TYE world are getting dividends, I'm getting those emails, uh, but it has not been the landslide that I had hoped for the consumer. So, um, you know, my prediction was obnoxiously off. One, it may not happen uh, at scale because companies are just heartless uh, and just don't understand the financial benefit. And listen, I'm heartless. I mean, it's all about the wallet with TYE. I mean, to me, it's this is how you do business. Uh, and two, it's not at enough scale or ruined yet. People are still flabbergasted and excited when a business acknowledges them or does something half-assed caring. Hey, Gary. This is Kyle at Jock Nerd and Ruby. It's two and a half. And I was wondering, uh, in the future, how are you going to treat social media with your children? Oh no, don't hide. Say hi. Can you wave? Oh, cute. Hi. Hi. Hey. Uh, Kyle, Ruby, you know, it's been interesting. Lizzie and I, like, look, it's hard to find pictures of Lizzie on the internet, let alone, you know, all full blast. And Misha and Xander are even more of a rare commodity. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, I have a partner in crime in this in this answer. Uh, Lizzie, you know, is very much the CEO CEO of the household. I would I'd like to think I'm the COO, but sometimes I'm just like you know, 
the maintenance man. No, I mean, the truth is we communicate a lot about this. Uh, you know, I'm a counter puncher. I talk a lot about that. I react to the time. For me to predict where social's gonna be or technology, but what I do know is one thing. It's amazing to watch, you know, 13-year-old girl behavior where they're spending 45 minutes on the lighting and the angle on an Instagram photo and then if it doesn't get enough likes in the first three minutes, they take it down. So clearly self-esteem is very wrapped up in these things and every parent loves their child so much that you want to keep them away from bullying and being made fun of or getting into things too early in their lives. I have the extra pressure, in my opinion, of deciding to raise my children in Manhattan where an eight-year-old maps more like a 17-year-old in many other parts of the country. And so it, it, you know, it's a challenge and it's something I think a lot about and something I care a lot about. Um, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to handle it. I think we're going to handle it by you know, instilling an enormous amount of love into our children. Uh, it's very important for us to uh, establish a foundation of who they are. Uh, we've been spending a lot of time of like mission statements and like key pillars that we want to instill uh, of how we want them to act, how, how we want them to treat others is very important to me. Um, uh, Im- imposing enormous self-esteem into them is important to me and I think that to me, you know, there's new dynamics but it's still always the same and, and what I mean by that is the core pillars of good parenting haven't changed since the beginning of time. There's new dynamics. M- you know, those things are probably more important than ever. Having more self-esteem, more perseverance, uh, better manners, uh, all those things probably matter more than ever and so I'm gonna just try to deliver tried and true things to my kids, much like I do with business. The world changes, but the principles of patience and, and, and believing your people and, and establishing infrastructure and, and playing the long game. You know, I'm, you know, I've said it before on this show, you know, a, uh, a uh, tortoise in a hare's costume, you know, I believe in old school things like that and so I'm just gonna instill really good core fundamentals and let the outside world evolve because I can't control it and just instill my children into that world most prepared and best positioned to succeed. Everybody asks, what do you think about Snapcash? All right, I get it. You want to know about Snapcash. Uh, Just watch the video. Nice job, nice production. Um, look, I, I think this continues. This is why I invested in Venmo four years ago. Uh, the, the thought of payment transfers amongst people in a paperless, cashless world is very important and to layer it into a social network. What I like about it for Snapchat is they're getting in very early. Uh, What I mean by very early is not into the game, very early in one's age to create the behavior. Because Snapchat has a heavy 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old demo, they can capture a lot of that behavior. I always thought that Facebook, I remember thinking that the social network I wanted to build uh, when Facebook was blowing it up was one that was around your license because I wanted to get to people before they went to college and I thought like if we start a social network where your license was your gateway in, that there was something there and and that's what Snapchat has done. It's gone earlier. Um, It creates behavior. Look, cryptocurrency, uh, Apple Pay, this kind of stuff with Square and Snapchat, if I'm a traditional financial service, uh, I'm very concerned about the uh, enormous innovation over the last 24 months invading on my turf and uh, Uh, If I'm a consumer, I'm extremely happy because uh, competition breeds enormous innovation and the number one thing we love is time and I see a lot of things in the financial world saving us time now, saving us time to go into our wallet and take this out and take out cash. Actually, I have to give receipts to Matt. Um, You know, so that's good Uh, and you know, or this, you know, taking out a credit card and swiping it takes time. All these things are much quicker in this world my friends, in sports and in business really matters because we value time the most. It be time to get a watch. Question of the day. What is your number one most recent app download? What is the last app you downloaded on your phone? I'm gonna give you my answer. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I think, um, hold on, I wanna give you the truth. Hold on, screwing up the show. Um, I know there was something very, very recent that I liked. Uh, I'm playing with Swipe. Swipe is uh, fairly recent for me. Uh, let me show it one more time. Swipe it. Uh, all right. There. So uh, S W I P E. Check that out. 
Thanks for watching 44, a little chill, kind of like post-vacation intensity. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Check out Seth Meyers tonight and subscribe to the show. Don't forget the podcast. Oh crap, wait, subscribe. I need subscriptions because I can't push this many right hooks in social, so subscribe.